to be the GOAT format world champion. This is easy. What is up, GOAT world? It is me, your boy JDZ, and I'm back at you again with another GOAT format video. Today, in the building, I had to get him. You already know what time it is. The number one player, the overall GOAT of all time. You talking Tiger Woods? No, no, no. You're talking MJ? No, no, no. You're talking LeBron? No, 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 no. I have probably the greatest GOAT format player to ever live. I have none other than Anthony. Alvarado in the building, your newest GOAT format world champion from 2024. How you doing, champ? How you living? How you feeling? Talk to the GOAT world, man. Welcome, welcome back to the program for the 50th time, probably. You know what I'm saying? Welcome, welcome back, champ. Hey, JDZ. Thank you again for having me. Thank you for inviting me back to the program. It has been a while. I know this has been a long season, and uh, you know, to to end it with the world championship win. Uh, I couldn't have written it any better uh, to bookend it this way uh, was absolutely incredible uh, and I'm very grateful and I'm very proud and I'm just happy to be uh, the one that you're interviewing uh, for this uh, this spot and uh, you know if, if we only did one interview all year I would hope it was this one so I'm very grateful. Yeah, that, that's my bad. I have, I've kind of been slipping on my interviews, man. But if I was going to interview anyone, I would have interviewed you so many times that it would just got boring. So I'm glad we saved it to this special occasion. <laughs> but talking about this season, okay, if you guys don't know, in this past 2024 season, Anthony Alvarado, my guest that I have here in the studio with me, completely obliterated the go format record for invites earned in the regular season. I think he eclipsed that with nine this season, and now he cemented that with a go format world championship. So really quickly, before we get into the deck and talk about this tournament, I really want you to kind of brush over your entire season and just talk about consistency and what that means. Because if you don't know, there are a lot of detractors to go format, people who don't really understand how this format works, and they chalk it up to luck and variance, luck and variance all the time. You've kind of managed to just negate all that. So talk to us about that. How do you stay so consistent? How do you manage to win so much? And what is someone who's trying to be like you? What are some steps they need to take to get to where you're at right now? Yeah, and, and, and that's a great question because I know a lot of people are deterred from playing GOAT format due to the high variance. But it, there is some skill involved. And, and I think the, the best way to put it is uh, in order to be successful in these type of tournaments and these type of events in this particular format, you got to give yourself the opportunities. And, and the way you do that is by playing as clean as possible, making the best decisions as possible. And at the end of the day, um, just never uh, allowing your emotions and tilting and, and and forcing yourself down bad lines because you're upset that your opponent opened up Trinity, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, this is a heavily Trinity-based format, right? Like everyone complains about getting Trinity, but, um, you know, somebody will watch the finals of the world championship and, and see that all season I've been doing exactly what happened in that finals. And that's, I've been squeezing water out of a rock. And when my opponent opens Trinity, my opponent throughout the game has seen more Trinity cards than me. I've just made sure to stay focused, stay poised and always play the game out in its entirety to the best of my abilities. Uh, if, if I can, and, and Ludo, shout out to Ludo, he's always told me, he said, I'd rather win, um, I'd rather lose uh, if I'm going to be making mistakes. He said, when I win, I want to win because I'm playing uh, flawlessly. If I lose and I made and I played flawlessly, you know, that's that's go format. I can chalk it up to being go format. It is what it is. That's going to happen. But you play as accurate as possible, choose the best lines as possible, as many times as possible to give yourself the best chance. And, you know, where the chips fall, that's that's where they fall. And uh, to your point, um, this season, I've been doing just that. I've, I've been watching folks um, lose directly to a trap, dust shoot, and Trinity and just, you know, tilt and the match is over for them. And uh, for, me, for me, when I get trap, dust shooted, I say, okay, now, how could I send as much misinformation to my opponent that they make mistakes to allow me to crawl back in this game? Uh, how do I survive long enough so that eventually I will see my Trinity cards? You've heard the expression, run out of gas. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at some point, you have to force your opponent to run out of gas, and, and then you eventually will hit your gas. And all of a sudden, your car is rolling downhill, and, and you're flying right through them. And, and, and that's what it's all about. It's literally just hold on tight. Uh, wait for your opportunities and, and make sure when they come, you're ready for them. Um, this season, I, I've you know won five EWCQs, 
Um, I won the uh, GO format uh, championship number 21. You know, I got won the, the GO format uh, tag 3v3 championship and, um, you know, two War League championships. So that, that's the, that's how I got my nine invites. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's three of them are team related. And I think, um, you know, throughout the season, one of the big things uh, that helped a lot was collaborations with the team members. Uh, you could see that Insidious, uh, he had six invites this year. Uh, he was on team rehab for Go format War League season four. So shout outs to him on a fantastic year with six invites. Uh, you know, once he made the switch to turbo, uh, once he was open to learning and practicing and, you know, he just he blew up and he did great. Um, shout out to Don't Copy. He had five invites uh, playing just half the season. So he may have, yeah. if he continued to play, he may have done just as well as I did, you know, locking in more uh, invites over the course of the year. So shout outs to him. Uh, he was also part of our team rehab gold format War League season four win. Uh, and he was the critical piece to that because, um, you know, the way we say it is in overdoses, is you summon TER and you win. And, and Don't Copy was willing to uh, take on that control deck. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have Geist with us for season four. He was on relapse. But, um, you know, it was very important for us to be able to have that flexibility. Um, you know, we were able to, um, you know, show versatility throughout War League. And, uh, you know, we got a win there. So uh, it's it's been a hell of a year. Um, and, but I think for those detractors of GOAT format uh, who, who say it's all variants, all luck, uh, I, I think just like any format, there are cards that will lose you the game, whether it's Brain Control or Dark Arm in Edison, whether it's Soul Charge in Hat format. There's always a card out there uh, that sort of you know, takes the format from one place to another. That's what gives it its identity. And for GOATs, those that identity cards are BLS, Odd Graceful Duo, and guess what? Um, None of those cards are just auto wins. They're not one card FTKs. Uh, so do your best. Uh, play uh, with your head on straight and you, you give yourself the best chance you can. And, and that's how I was able to you know, get as many wins this season. I just kept a steady head. Yeah, but you, you mentioned something and I kind of want to bring that up too because I do see that myself, especially from the position like from the booth or from commentary, even when I'm watching a game or playing myself. Uh, you talked about tilt. T-I-L-T. That's a word that kind of comes from poker and other games. Tilt, if you don't know, is when something goes bad and then your decision making just kind of goes out the window because you are so stressed out or you're so disappointed by something that happened in the game. The better players in our format, yourself included, and there are others, they figured out a way to manage this tilt factor. And I think that also directly relates to victories. So talk to us about tilt. How do you manage tilt? Do you tilt? Honestly, this is a this is a question that you can answer honestly, or you can you can cap if you want to. Do you tilt? And how if you do, how do you manage that tilt and keep it under control before this thing spirals out of control? Because I know I tilt, I tilt hard, and I've lost several times because of tilt. So talk to us about how do you manage tilt and what do you do to uh, to to combat it to make it a little bit you know to to, to keep it under control. One of the things about tilting is um, it's it's a matter of control of your own emotions. Mm. And one of the things that I, I, I preach to my friends and my family, my daughters, you always want to be in control of your emotions. And, and no matter what the situation is, whether it's real life, professional, and gaming, you know, being in control of one's emotions is, is incredibly important. So. Uh, the first thing I would tell people to do is take for what you will, you know, real life and, and the hobby and try to match your your attitude, uh, how you actually um, manage your emotions. You know, would you would you punch a wall in real life for, you know, being upset about something? Maybe, you know, take two breaths and realize that punching that wall isn't worth it. And your mm -hmm. opponent drops a duel on you. You want to throw two punches in the air and punch sand or, you know, throw this? <laughs> yeah, sure. But maybe just take those two breaths instead and go, you know what? The game's not over just yet. I think that's the most critical piece to it. Uh, personally, um, I've learned throughout the years, anger really doesn't accomplish much. Tilting doesn't ever benefit me. Uh, the only time I've ever brought an attitude somewhere that helped benefit is, you know, maybe going into the gym in one session and all of a sudden I'm busting out PRs because I'm motivated with some extra oomph behind because I'm mm. just got a little anger behind me. But uh, outside of that, you're not really doing yourself any good. So uh, I, I, I can commend those who work on themselves, uh, but I think you should take the time to work on yourselves personally, professionally, and uh, in this game. And, and part of that is to control yourself when it comes to tilting. You have plenty of games where you open up Trinity. Your opponents will have plenty of games where they do. That's variance. If we play 100,000 games, you know, you, you should be 50-50. Uh, 
uh, with a large enough sample size. So understand that it's not a game against you. It's not you making a mistake. It's it's just something you got to play through. And uh, there's times where it's in your favor and sometimes where it's not. Uh, and again, case in point, the finals against Charlie Cope. Shout out to him. Good person. Uh, heard his interview with Return Winner. Make sure you guys check out Return Winner's channel for that interview with Charlie Coke. Uh, but case in point, game one, he opened up Trinity. And I had to sort of do what I could with it. Uh, game three was just the opposite. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he had to deal with me opening up some powerful spell cards and eventually all three Trinity cards. So it's a matter of just controlling your emotions, playing the best of your ability. And again, not allowing yourself to choose wrong lines just because you're desperate or you decide the game's already over. So you're not going to care to make the best move possible. Kind of kind of on that same vein, before we before we hop into the deck, I just have a couple more questions I want to ask you about these types of things, because there's not a lot yeah. of there's not a lot of opportunities for people to hear straight from the horse's mouth. You know what I'm saying? I got the horse in the building right now. The goat horse is in the building. So let's go ahead and ask him some questions and get some perspective from what he's saying. So you talked about tilt. Now let's the other side of tilt. Let's talk about pressure. Let's talk about expectations. Okay, because there is a lot of times when we first when we did polls, you know, people ask who's gonna win, who's gonna take it down. Everyone was like, Oh, Alvarado's gonna take it down. You had mass expectations come to this thing, a lot of pressure. There were points in the stream where we had, you know, maybe six hundred plus uh, live viewers watching this thing live you know you out here and some people might not be able to stack up to that pressure of of the situation of the moment so talk to us about managing pressure and how you're able to do that so well and what advantages that can give you from being able to live up to expectations and manage pressure yep and, and i think that's a great point and, and and before we get into it just congratulations on such a successful stream mm. 600 plus folks watching the live I uh, checked out the video and watched the recap for day two. If you haven't checked it out, please go ahead and check out that stream. There's plenty of funny moments, plenty of laughter uh, amongst the group. Everything from sleeve ones to Mr. 69s. Uh, but uh, congratulations on 10,000 plus views on a live. I think that's amazing. Hell yeah. uh, just keep up the great work. And I know that uh, we're just going to keep pushing GOAT format further and further. Um, relative to pressure, I mean... I think one of the things personally that has helped me is uh, having joined all the tournaments that I could mm. uh, with time permitting. Um, I think uh, this season, I probably joined 25 to 30 different tournaments, um, not counting the PBRs from uh, Format Library. Uh, shout out to Jazz and Format Library. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of PBR, it's been about 25 to 30 uh, goldformat.com events and then GGPs that I've gone to. And I think the more tournament experience you get, uh, the less pressure you feel. Uh, so that's one way for newer players or just players in general, who even if they have experience, to just get out there, uh, find yourself in the finals and the top eight, you know, more often during the course of the year. And, you know, it sort of becomes second nature. You expect to be there and, um, you know, you, you, you plan on succeeding and that's where you end up. I mean, Insidious in the formula server all the time says, I've been here before, I've been here, I've, I've done that. And that's because he has so much more experience in, in top eight and winning events because, you know, obviously, like I mentioned, he had six invites this mm -hmm. year. So it just goes a long way when you start, um, you know, experiencing these tournaments. Me personally, um, you know, go GOATS is a hobby. Um, I, I have a high level or high competition drive, but... Um, to me, this is not real pressure. Um, I'm used to the, the stage. Uh, I've been in the finals of a Shonen Jump, 500 plus folks back in 2005. And I've been in the top eight of the World Goat Format Championship. Uh, pressure wasn't um, sort of something I had to personally deal with. Uh, the nerves, maybe I was a little nervous, um, more so because I knew I was three wins away uh, once mm -hmm. I got into the top cut. I'm actually becoming the first American champion uh, this is 20 plus years of, um, of putting together sort of a career. And again, to bookend this one particular season, the way it, uh, it went, um, it, I, you couldn't have written a story for any one player. Uh, and, and, you know, my relationship with the community, uh, you know, as a war chief and go format war league, um, as, you know, sort of a, a staple in the formula server when I can be, um, I, I try to, um, I try to live, you know, honorably and, and amongst the, the community. And, and again, people matter to me. I mm -hmm. think um, I'm a subservient person by nature. So being subservient, you know, I'm always a people pleaser. I'm looking to give as much of myself to others because that's what feeds me. The more uh, I can bring joy into the community, uh, the more I'm happy and the more I can continue to feed the community. 
And, and I think that's important for me. So uh, pressure, not so much, but those are ways you can definitely deal with it. I think experience uh, lends a real good hand to that. So. Hell yeah, man. I like that. I like what you had to say. I like what you had to say, champ. So guys, make sure if you like what the champ had to say, you guys get into the like, like the video, obviously, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel, get into the comment section and tell me if you're vibing with it or if you're not. And like the champ said, make sure you guys go back and check out that, 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 uh, the, the day two and day one, both of those, uh, both of those stream coverages, man. I thought that tournament was great, man. We were so blessed and fortunate to have the matches that we did. We had some phenomenal goat format duels in that damn tournament, man. The best players really came up and they showed up and they showed out and the champ here went ahead and took it down. So go back and check that out. If you guys have the time, it was a great, great stream, but champ, I got your deck list here. We're going to go and pull this thing up and then we can do a little deck breakdown and you can tell us all about this thing. And also as you guys are watching that stream, go back and check out the end of the stream. The champ has some raw emotion stuff. He broke some stuff down for you guys there. So check that out and then come back to this video to see what champ, we're going to do a little deep dive on, <laughs> on, on the first place winning. Here is your goat format 2024 first place championship deck. Uh, built by Anthony Alvarado and piloted to victory. So tell us about this deck. Go ahead and give us a breakdown. There are some interesting texts and uh, choices that you made for this deck uh, that are different. And I'm going to pull up some of your decks that you had throughout the regular season. Uh, just talk about this deck, this tournament. Why did you make it this way? Because it looks like you kind of went back into back into the time machine a little bit on this one. And I mentioned that on the stream. We went straight back to 20, 2019, 2020 on this one. Not going to lie. So just talk, talk to us about this deck really quickly, if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, like JDZ said, uh, make sure you check out the last uh, half hour of that um, that stream, not only for uh, when the finals was over, but uh, to your point, uh, I was overwhelmed. Um, I had to compose myself. It, it took me about 10, 15 minutes to uh, uh, to be able to uh, like take your call because I was just, you heard me at the very start of the call. If you, if you listen to the first couple minutes, uh, man, I was still a little choked up. And again, it's a, it's a long time coming and uh, this is the bookend of, uh, of, you know, I can't ask for anything more. There's no other higher honor um, to have won the world championship. So um, relative to the deck, and I did cover it a little bit in the uh, raw interview mm -hmm. uh, post the championship, but um, a lot of what went into building this deck, uh, it was on the backs of the community, um, talking over ideas um, in the formula server, um, just read back reading some of people's thoughts as, as far as expectations for the world championship. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a statistical data nerd and uh, I like to pull together numbers. And uh, my best friend, Christopher Perovic, Chris Perovic, KP for most of you, he and I had discussed coming into October, you know, he made some uh, time for me that he and I could do some um, some analysis based on the uh, the world's uh, invite database that was public. That it was public information, and, and on that on that document, you saw everybody's names, what country they were from, uh, what decks they used to qualify for the uh, world championship, and, and that's a lot of information that you know maybe a lot of folks don't take the extra you know time to look at. But uh, for someone as competitive as me as and as data driven as I am, um, I'm going to take full advantage of. Uh, that information and you know at the end of the day i i looked at the invitees and made my best guess as to what they would be running for worlds many obviously would be running the same deck they qualified for uh qual qualified with but um you got players like dueling high shout out to dueling high he qualified with multiple decks and um you know going into the world championship i thought he'd run warrior and he ended up running ct uh, but then you have people on the other side who like jack sworn he he qualified with uh warriors but has been playing chaos turbo throughout the rest of the season in, in war league so uh shout out to jack sworn and the whole bird cage by the way um but yeah those guys um you know have they run different decks and you have to be mindful of that so i put together my own personal list of the 90 uh, eight players and, and what decks they qualified with and what decks I most recently saw them playing with. And then uh, Chris, um, with that information, he and I put together, um, and, and all shout outs to him, he put together an EV calculation based on that, based on the format of the tournament, which was nine rounds of Swift, uh, cut into a top eight. And we had to de determine what was the best deck to get us to day two. And by day two, top eight. And um, what we what we wanted to do is calculate uh, based on the win rates we saw in Format Library, the win rates we saw in War League over this past uh, season five, uh, how successful would our choice be if we ran something like Chaos Warriors? How successful would we be if we ran Chaos Turbo? 
uh, the best EV uh, valuation uh, it pointed us to running Chaos Turbo. We, we we put together a bunch of iterations of the Chaos Turbo deck for hours. Uh, we talked about main decking the board, taking out Chaos Sorcerers, uh, trying to make ourselves less vulnerable to trap dust shoots. Uh, can we run Solemns and trap dust shoots similar uh, to how a warrior does just to put down cards to avoid trap dust shoot? At the end of the day, we knew everybody would be prepared for Chaos Turbo. To put, it's, it's a very hard pill to swallow to know that uh, the best deck for the event would also be the most vulnerable deck for the event. So mm. uh, the final numbers were 45% of the field we expected to be running Chaos Turbo, 31% uh, were on aggro strategy, 10% on control, 7% on RGT, 6% on burn, and then if... Uh, El Rico uh, showed up with uh, library. We expected one library FTK. So uh, with that said, uh, we had to make choices around that. And I think um, when you look at the deck list in front of you here, um, we decided that Trap Dust Shoot would be a vulnerable card uh, for this tournament uh, in day one play. And what we mean by that is we're going to run into decks that are not Chaos Turbo. Uh, we expect 55% of the field to not be Chaos Turbo. And unless I'm winning RPS all day, those trap dust shoots become a liability. For me, I have the confidence to not need to run trap dust shoot main deck. So my GFC 21 winning deck uh, did not run trap dust shoot. I cited all three copies. So, so running into a major event, and then GFC 21 was an open field. If you look at the the deck uh, types that were used in that field, it was probably similar, where you get 30% aggro, 40, 45% chaos turbo. And and it told me that I, I can walk into an event with confidence that without Trap Dust Shoot, I could still be successful. And, and Chris and I had this discussion, and, and uh, so Trap Dust Shoot was something I was willing to cut from the list. Uh, I did go to bed at 1 o'clock at night. Uh, I, I checked the timer. It was like one one o two when I sent Chris... This is my list. It had trap dust shoots in it. It was it was mythical. It mm. was mythical main deck with uh, the standard side deck almost uh, with goats though. And I said, look, I need you to stay up. I need you to put together independently the list that you believe uh, I can win the world championship with. And the you know two just about one fifty three, almost two in the morning, he sends me a list and uh, I'm I'm sleeping. I wake up and I go, this guy is effing insane. He has no <laughs> trap dust shoots, but again. I have the confidence from GFC 21 that, you know, I can work without them. And then the list just looks like his uh, Clash of Champions, uh, the very first Clash of the Championship. Um, folks will see that the main deck is exactly the same. Uh, three Sakurets, two armors were swapped out for Jar Greeds. And, and one of the experiences Chris had, and if you watch, uh, go back to goformat.com, Chris actually put up a video and he has a PowerPoint about the deck itself and he talks about it. He talked about how Sakuretsus were prepared for a field that he thought would be heavily uh, aggro. So Sakus with a 30% aggro field also, just like Trap Dust Shoots, they don't feel right to main deck. It doesn't mm. feel like it's the, the best choice when only 30% of the field is aggro. Uh, it could play against Turbo, it could be good against Control. Uh, sometimes you'll stop a Girugara Panda, but it's just not an optimal card. And and at the end of the day, we decide that speed, uh, and, and you know, in the words of Rex Speedman, I want to go fast. <laughs> this game is about optimization and speed. Uh, speed was the goal, and uh, three Jar Greets took this, the main deck slots over Sakuretsu armors. Um, last two big things uh, about the main deck is uh, Night Assailant. Mm. Um, Night Assailant, it's a great card. Uh, oh, you know, Chris didn't main it back in Clash, and and I, I noticed that uh, some of my Chaos Turbo matchups, um, Night Ascent was a liability in the sense that uh, I couldn't set it if they were ahead, uh, meaning they already resolved some of their flip effects. So I'm staring down a floating monster, whether it be Spy, whether it be a, a Deco, a Faith. Uh, th these are all monsters that are resolved, and my Night Assailant felt like I would always set it when I'm ahead, and that way I can stay ahead by stopping uh, sort of a Magician of Faith or, or something like that. And uh, I felt like the higher ceiling for this event um, would have been to just have a Faith down and reuse or recycle some spell cards. And and we, we opted to go with a full slate of uh, three Faiths, three Decos, three Spies, and and no Night of Sons. And I felt Night of Sons didn't progress our game state the way we wanted to. Um, and I, I took advice from Chris on that because, uh, you know, Clash of the Champions sort of proved similar in the fact that he didn't need Night of Sons in the mirror match. And uh, I even see and notice people were citing out one or two copies of Night of Sons for, like, Kaikus in the mirror match. And mm -hmm. so uh, it didn't feel... 
it was necessary and it didn't progress the game as far as how fast I wanted to go. Uh, so I was vibing with that. Um, at, at the end of the day, I asked Chris, I says, uh, you know, are you insane? Or because we weren't <laughs> running Trap Dusher in that sense. And then I said, do you think I can win the world championship with this deck? And, you know, Chris is a, a man of many words, but ultimately he said, yes, I believe you can. Um, and I said, you know what? Let's roll without Night of Silence and Trap Dust Shoots and just trust that he's not steering me in the wrong way. And I, I always trust Chris. And, and I, I mentioned that during the uh, post-Worlds uh, interview. And then Book of Moons, um, if you ask any GOAT player in the GOAT community, whether it's in War League, Formula Server, or even uh, some of it that's leaked out to the GoFormat.com server, uh, they'll, they'll usually you'll hear one of two answers when it comes to what do you think about Book of Moon. Number one, it's ass. Mm. Number two, it's the most underrated, versatile card in the format. And, um, you know, for this particular event, um, I decided to run two. Uh, again, mostly because it was in Chris's uh, deck list that he provided me, but I was still comfortable in running the two copies because it sort of uh, allowed me to defend myself in those matchups that weren't Chaos Turbo. Uh, you know, when Blade Knight comes after me, when level two yeah. Kaiku tries to uh, take shots at my flip effects or my graveyards, I have Book of Moon as a defensive card, but its versatility is also that I can use it to recycle my flips. And if you look at the list, there's there's 12 flips that I'd be glad to set back down in order to uh, to uh, resolve their effects again, whether it's getting a third spy out of the deck, uh, defending a spy from an attack so I can wall up with three spies, drawing an extra card so it becomes a pseudo upstart with Dekoichi, or in general, just recycling faith to get any one of my, you know, powerful spell cards, you know, using Nobleman many times, Pot of Greaves. Uh, eventually, uh, I'll look at the stats to see how often I resolve faith, but between having three fates and having book of moons to resolve them i mean i i probably pot agreed it and upstart goblin more than anyone uh in this yeah. whole event and, and a big part of the reason that was important to me was um shout outs to uh, stout astronaut um, he did some statistical analysis on his page about you know how, what is it that separated me from the field during one of the pwcq's um mm -hmm. events and he noticed that i resolved trinity uh, you know, just as much as anyone else, but more importantly, I upstart Goblin more than anyone else, right? So I was able to get to those upstarts, thin my deck out as quickly as possible, and and eventually get to Trinity. And again, once I start recycling them with Book of Moon, uh, these flip effect monsters uh, become very powerful, much more powerful than uh, a Trap Death Shoot that could be live or could be dead, or a Knight of Silent that sort of just uh, played it in my hand and possibly got me a plus one from a flip in the graveyard. Um, and then one last thing about Book of Moon, obviously uh, it's a great protection card for uh, your big monsters, your bosses, BLS and Sorcerer. I mean, it protects you from their ring, their snatch, but also enemy Chaos Sorcerers. Uh, if an opponent tries to Chaos Sorcerer down your uh, your uh, Dekoichi or remove your Dekoichi, you can set it. Obviously, if it's your Chaos Monsters, you can book it down. So Book of Moon, uh, to my point, uh, while most people say it's ass, uh, the, the other group uh, would say it's an uh, underutilized card with uh, plenty of versatility. And, and for me, looking to make my deck as quick as possible and as consistent as possible into the field statistically of what I expected, uh, it, it allowed me to have literally 40 live cards, game one, against all of my opponents and Book of Moon would help me even Nobleman across out if I went against an aggro deck. Mm. So it, it, it's it's just uh, it's it's just the 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 synergy of all these cards being live. If Alvarado six cards to start with every match, I'll take that versus going second and possibly opening up Chaos Sorcerers and Trap Dust Shoots and Knight of Silence that they're behind because of you know them resolving a dust shoot. Now it becomes Alvarado with three live cards. And I wanted to have more live cards. I wanted to be as deep into my deck as possible. So if they know them in the faith or I know them in their faith and I banish three copies, I just remove three copies from my deck. My deck is three cards thinner. Mm -hmm. You just lost one card from your deck, right? If I knocked your faith. So I was always getting deeper. And if you look at the replays, rounds one through nine in the top eight, uh, I haven't looked at them all, but I, I, beg, I bet that uh, my deck count at the end of all of the games for the most part, was much lower mm. than my opponent. And you, and you, I heard you on the stream when I rewatched it. Was he's off to the races again? And, and that that's what it was about. Yeah. It was about being off to the races. And uh, Rex Speedman uh, would be proud of uh, how the deck. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> I like it, man. I yeah. like Rex Speedman. 
and there, and we we talk talking about Rex Speed. We talk about a triple triple jar of greed. So that's a that's an interesting car. I think that is the most interesting car in this top eight because you want to know why. Every single deck in the top eight played Jar of Greed. The Burn deck played it. The Warrior deck played it. The Control decks played it. The Turbo decks played it. Everybody who made it to the top eight played Jar of Greed. Talk to us about that card. Why is that card so damn good? And why is everybody playing Jar of Greed now? I think uh, one of the one of the things you'll start to notice, and again, one of the reasons I didn't want to run Trap Dust Shoot, uh, was because Jar of Greed's the perfect card to help you lay down cards from your hand and then pick them back up whenever you want to. And, and what I mean by that is my opening hand, if, if I can lay down two Jar of Greed's and, and maybe a, another trap card with like a Book of Moon or and the monster, I'm down to two cards in hand and your trap does shoot to dead, right? Right. So throughout the game, if I get opportunities to set additional cards to beta heavy storm, to force you to heavy two back row and, and ultimately trade one for one, uh, those are the type of, imp that's the type of impact Jar of Greed has uh, on, on your deck. So uh, for me, um, Jar of Greed's allowed me to play around Trap Dust Shoot. Uh, it allowed me to set cards, flip it, and then draw up to my third cards. And again, my opponent having to play an experienced Chaos Turbo player in the mirror and not know my hand because they have Trap Dust Shoots that are dead. Uh, was a huge advantage for me. Um, I went six and one in the mirror match, and I think cards like Jar Greed allowed uh, allowed other players like uh, Gote in his burn deck. Shout outs to Gote, Moxies in his warrior deck. Shout outs to Moxies to just be able to lay cards down and make sure that you're you're dead. Your cards are dead, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, maximizing how many dead cards you have, uh, including Trap Dust Shoot. Um, one last thing, uh, just before. Uh, we jump back. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about Book of Moon is, mm -hmm. is Book of Moon because we're talking about playing around Trap Dust Shoot. Book of Moon was that card that felt like solemn judgment relative to how it could protect me, uh, whether it be from Snatch or Ring or reusing a flip effect. It, but it was also very important that I was allowed to almost set that card very freely once I resolved the flip effect and felt like I could play around Dust Shoot even more, right? Mm. So in other words, uh, if I, my Deco flipped, I could always set my Book of Moon first, flip the Deco, draw a card, and, and try to remain under four cards from Dust Shoot, but know that my back row is something real solid that would protect me. It felt just as strong as a Regeki break when it comes to protecting me, and I, it wasn't like Solemn where I had to protect or pay, pay half my life to use it. So I, I think that's another... Uh, valid point that i think folks should know about book of moon you know i don't always want to give out all secrets but i think that's a fair point that uh, for those who are on the fence about book of moon um it, it has that versatility also uh but yeah but jar greed uh i'm not surprised when you tell me everybody in the top eight ran um you know jar greeds um, i think if they could all probably go back uh, and you can interview them all they, they would all say that they were very happy with the card mm -hmm. um it, it did exactly what it was intended to do. Uh, it lets them get to their power cards. It lets them play around trap dust shoot, and I think that that's a big reason why these particular players made it as far as they did, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it might be something. Jar of Greed MVP, Book of Moon MVP. You you be the judge, you know. <laughs> MVP MVP. Yeah. But let's get let's get into the side deck, man. Let's talk about this. So you got the patent pending uh, Zumbiro the Dark, and there are only two. Okay, and you got two, two, two. There's a lot of twos up. There's a lot of two ofs in here. This might be a KP special for real. I'm saying a lot of two ofs yeah, in this thing. <laughs> talk, talk to us about the two ofs. Talk to us about the side deck. Why'd you put it together and how did it perform for you uh, throughout this tournament? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly what you said. The KP special. KP will, you will never find KP running a one of in the side deck if he can help it. He, he's, he's, a, he's a man who likes even numbers. So he, he put together this side deck to go along with uh, the main deck. And, and part of it um, uh, was, was an element to the, the tournament structure. Again, nine rounds mm -hmm. of Swiss. And these were timed rounds. So part of us wanted to uh, be prepared for the aggro matchup in the side. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure that uh, we had substance cards for uh, time procedures. Uh, so that's why you'll see uh, Mystic Walk in the side deck. I'm not the biggest fan of Mystic Walk in double elimination or War League play where, you know, we're not timed. Uh, but I, I'd rather have the Dust Tornado and third Regeki break. But uh, considering it was time and, and I wanted to trust Chris's list as it was, uh, I, I decided to keep the Mystic Walks. And I think those played a, a critical role in my round one. Uh, and, then, and surprisingly, I ended up playing three uh, three versions of Burn. Round one was Drain Burn against Gulaz. Uh, shout, out, shout out to him. He's, he's one of the newer players on the scene with uh, Drain Burn, top 10 FLC this year. Had a great season. Uh, Gote, I played him, and I believe in round seven. 
on Panda Burn with a you know specialty side deck, some skill drain and uh, zombies mm -hmm. for those who want to check out that top eight list. Uh, but um, yeah, I think Walks could have played a role there. I lost that matchup. Uh, and then I, I won against uh, one of my good friends from Greece, uh, former teammate uh, Moro, uh, round five, I believe I played him. I, I, I got I got the win against him on Panda Burn, and the walks played, uh, the Regeki breaks played. And I think one of the, again, unspoken, unsung heroes was uh, Book of Moon and Magician is the Faith. Um, once, once you're able to start cycling these uh, flip effects, particularly Faith with MST and Heavy Storm, Book of Moon and Walks, uh, I think you, you, you get a, a full sense of why, um, you know, Burn can struggle games two and three. But uh, talking about the rest of the side, uh, Scapegoats, again, because of time between Goats and Sakus, I, I, would, I would feel safe if I had to go into time. I don't believe I actually went into time uh, more than maybe once or twice. Uh, and I think the games may have been over. Um, I know Gulas round one I, I did win in time um you know through life points i had a 3k advantage but uh between his secret barrel if he had one more turn he probably would he would have killed me to be to be honest uh, that result would have been different with one more turn uh but sometimes again you have to you get lucky um, that, that's part of variance uh the the go package uh came in against any anything that was aggro so round two I played Gia, um, fantastic player. Um, she she had a quiet season, but she she made it to the Goat World uh, Championships. She was very consistent. Uh, she was on Warrior Return featuring Bazu, mm -hmm. and um, I, I brought in my meta Goat package into that matchup, and, and I, I was very thankful to have Goats uh, in that particular matchup with with my Sakus. Uh, the rest of the day, I didn't play many more aggro decks. So goats, uh, for the most part, probably saw uh, my my saw play uh, against Gia, and then uh, in the finals when I brought it in, uh, sort of to to mix up um, my uh, my matchup against Charlie. Uh, Metamorphosis, I thought played. I used Metamorphosis more than I did um, Scapegoats because I, I bring in Metamorphosis against Panda Burn when I see uh, at least two uh, copies of Nightmare Reels. So I think that's a good takeaway from folks mm. who, if you are using Metamorphosis, um, Nightmare Reels is one of those cards that will get your uh, monster stuck to the field, and and so Metamorphosis allows you to tribute that guy off the field which will get rid of the Nightmare Wheel. Uh, another critical piece or reason to run night, um, Metamorphosis, excuse me, is um, it allows you to get different attributes into the graveyard, right? Mm. So if you have your Dark Monster on field and you they, they're not removing anything on your fields for you to get that Dark Monster, you could always Metamorphosis, uh, you know, a Tsukiyome or a Spy or a Deco or something just to get a Dark into the graveyard. So I think it's a, it's a good card. Obviously, if you, you manage to drop a Sorcerer and meta into Ryu Senshi, it could also play a role. Same thing with Thunder Dragon into Balter. So don't sleep on Metamorphosis if it's available in your side deck and you have the cards to side out to use it against Burn. Um, jumping around, um, Trap Dust Shoots and Mind Controls. Uh, I played uh, a number of different combinations of those uh, throughout the tournament. Uh, but very matchup dependent. Um, again, I played seven Chaos Turbo matchups. Now, obviously, game one, I didn't have any of those. Uh, in my deck. Um, I had my Jar Reads and Book of Moons, but uh, games two and three, I definitely wanted to have some cut number of mind controls and some number of Trap Dust Shoot. Uh, I won't sit here and tell you guys that just because I went first, I, I used three Trap Dust Shoots. Um, there are different times where uh, I would mm. uh, still yeah. only bring in two and, and you know, not, not to say too much, but if you got folks who are using Solemn Judgment and they're the type who may be on you know, three jar greeds again. They're going to play around your dust shoot, so you don't want that that liability. So just be be conscious and think about you know how many trap dust shoots you want to use, and it it could be matchup and player dependent. Uh, so against Chaos Turbo, uh, again two anywhere from two to five of those would come in, or relative to the mind control and the trap dust shoots. And then uh, for warriors, if I if I had played them, I did not play warriors uh, during the event. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> warriors is, has not been treating me well. I mean, shout outs again to uh, Dueling High. He's been he's been cleaning my clock with warriors the past few months. Uh, same thing with SDL. Who um, you know, shout outs to him. He didn't make it this season to the world championship. He has uh, you know new family, his baby, and everything, and some other stuff going on. So shout outs to him. He'll be there in 2025, I'm sure. Uh, but the warrior deck, um, I, I was able to avoid it, but I did have some Byra. That's that's my my patent pending uh, patent <laughs> you know, sealed card, uh, the Byra the Dark. Um, and, I, and I think uh, it, it would have played if I needed to play. I, I may have brought it in against uh, Gia. I'm not sure if I did, but. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain I would have, uh, but that's the, probably the only time I used it throughout the tournament. Uh, I may have used it against Burn at some point, depending on the, you know, some of the cards I may have seen. But overall, the the side deck played uh, extremely well. I, I think if I if I would redo anything, um, I, I don't know if because of how little I go into time if I'd want to keep Ox, but I think for those, uh, if you know your pace of play, uh, maybe slightly slower, my number one recommendation is to be com uh, conscious of it and try to make sure it's reasonable. You don't want to put yourself in those positions where you coin flip a result uh, due to life points and time. Uh, but secondly, um, you know, have those cards ready and available. I mean, uh, Geist mentioned that he was very happy to be playing Chaos Control or, in his words, uh, Go Control with one Sorcerer. Uh, but he was very happy to have Karibo and two Mystic Walks in his side deck. And and, and it's not, you know, anything to do with, uh, you know, his pace of play. But, you know, if you're in a Swiss timed event, and MMF, the head judge, said he did not go into time, he didn't abuse time. So before you trolls go out there and say he's abusing uh, his side deck for time, um, he went to time, I think, once or twice, and they ended before time. Um, so mm -hmm. that said, I mean, you, you got to know your yourself. Uh, you know yourself, you know your opponents, you know your own pace of play. Uh, be ready for it. And based on my pace of play, uh, I don't know if Mystic Walk is something I would keep in the future. Uh, the Meta and Saku package, again, they're, they're very flexible for me. Uh, I guess in time they have multi-purpose uh but you know you've seen my decks if you if you should sweep through my uh ewcq list you'll see that there are times where i use sakus times where i use solemns times where i use goat meta i think it's all um you know meta dependent if i expect reasoning gates i want solemns if i don't expect them maybe i don't want solemns so much so uh take that with what you what you will um i think the side deck performs solid and i'm again uh happy for the overall performance uh throughout the uh weekend so Nice man, I like. It. I mean, and I, I I know before the detractors, they're already in the comment section. Oh, it's just it's just another it's just another turbo deck. Who cares? Who cares? Another turbo. Tur but I'm I'm serious, man. If you really pay attention to goat format, you can see that there are micro trends and there are things that change. And it might not be these huge sweeping changes, but these small like these small like small changes. I think it's pretty significant for people who really pay attention to this game and follow this thing on a competitive circuit. I really like it. But make sure you guys get into the comment section. Tell me what you think about this deck. What would you do different? How do you like it? Will you play this deck? Will you load it up? Will you, will, what, what do you think? Get in the comment section. Let me know. All right, champ. All right, champ. I like this deck. But before we wrap this thing up, man, I got some other things I want to talk to you about. Again, this is a momentous achievement. It's a momentous occasion. I can't express that enough, how important this thing is and what you did this season. I don't think this would ever happen again, player of the year, by far and away. But uh, what do you think is next, man? What do you think, not just for yourself, and I did mention this in the in the previous Raw interview, but what do you think is next for GOAT format? Uh, you can talk about yourself. You can talk about your team. You talk about the future. Like, how do you think that we can continue to propel this thing uh, forward? Like, what do, what do you think the next evolution or the next step is going to be? Going into twenty, we're going into twenty years. This next season, this was our twenty. This was the 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 nineteenth season. We're going into twenty years of go format. What do you think is next, or what do you want to see next? I, I think one of the things I want to see, and, and, and that's a fabulous question. We, we did talk a little bit in the raw interview, so again, make sure you guys uh, go back to that day two coverage, the final thirty minutes, eight hours, twenty minutes in, uh, and, and catch that uh, raw um, interview uh, with me. Uh, you know, full of emotion and shouting everyone out. Uh, I, I, I suddenly planned a, a Euro trip, and <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> that sometime in 2025. So. Um, I, I do want to go to Europe, so I, I do plan, and hopefully I can schedule it around a GGP and just uh, at least uh, active GOAT events for those communities. So uh, Germany, uh, Italy, and uh, Greece particularly, I'd love to go visit those communities. So relative to what I want to see, uh, I think one of the big things that I noticed when I was doing the World's Invite spreadsheet was uh, of all the invites, uh, again, 90-plus players were invited, uh, there was 138 invitations given out uh, to the GOAT format world championship. And uh, that's, it's huge. And, and, and one of the reasons it's so huge is that almost 50, it was 48 of those invites were given out IRL mm. at our GGPs, at our GCIs, shout out to uh, GOAT Community Italia. And, and I think that's an incredibly great sign for where GOAT format is heading. Uh, being able to have these events uh, across the world uh, in Europe and the United States, uh, IRL, 
uh, is incredibly important to the growth of the online community. I, I don't think we grow as an online community until we start getting some of those IRL folks uh, interested and involved uh, in online community play. So I think one of the things I'd like to see for the future is a, as we host these GGPs, uh, we introduce the Discord and, and introduce the online community to the IRL players because at the end of the day, um, you know, the unity, uh, you know, we're stronger together. It plays here because, you know, being able to play IRL is fantastic, uh, but the online uh, allows us to connect in ways that uh, we would never connect. I talked about it in my raw interview, um, having conversations with people from Greece and Italy and Germany and all parts of the, uh, you know, you know, the world. Uh, one of the, our good friends is in Slovenia. I mean, it, it's incredible just what we can accomplish as a community. And I think the larger, um, the larger, you know, audience, uh, just to be able to get us all together is online. Just because I think, you know, logistics would be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, again, 2020, 20 a year anniversary, we do it bigger than ever. And we can do something IRL where a lot of people, you know, draw to this one major event, whether it be in the States or in Europe. Uh, but uh, it, it's less likely. Uh, I think what I'd like to see is IRL players uh, come and play online more than just uh, for, um, you know, the world championship. Whether that's them coming for only uh, GFCs. Mm -hmm. Fine. That's fantastic. So it's one one to three more events a year, FLCs. Um, maybe it's maybe too much for them to do PWCQs, but I think we could do a better job, uh, you know, bridging the gap between IRL and um, online play. I know in real life players call online fake and, and online players call in real life plumbers. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's there's some, you know, humor to it. There's some, you know, I get it. I, I prefer to touch the cards also. Uh, but if I want the highest level competition and, and uh, again, that's what I'm, I'm more interested in. I know you, uh, again, Charles versus Magneto, right? <laughs> um, uh, and I'll actually share that because in case somebody doesn't go back, I want them to know. Uh, but I think uh, for the competitive scene, uh, the more IRL players we can get to play online, I think uh, other formats do a good job of getting their IRL players to play online. And I think if we could do that, I think that'd be incredible. But I do think it starts with us as a community just being better and being more supportive of one another, not tearing each other down. And if I if I can make one plea to everybody, whether it's in War League and GoFormat.com and the Format Library servers and Formula servers, uh, if we could just stop pointing fingers and beating each other up and just uh, you know bring each other down, I think our our community would be much more inviting. And some of the IRL players who who don't find uh, joy in sticking around the community because of how toxic it can be, I, I think it would go a long way. Um, you know, I, I won the world championship and I'm not trying to, you know, step on a soapbox and be an ambassador. I have my fun. I say my comments and, and I, I've said things that, you know, I probably shouldn't have and wouldn't repeat again. But uh, I think if we could do anything is we can all individually online take the responsibility of being ambassadors for our format and it'll go a long way to the growth. And that's whether it be with Konami's help or just us by ourselves doing it. I think we got a lot more uh, ways to grow. And, you know, just the, the growing viewership uh, is proof of that, that we have people who who are interested. They want to see what's going on. And, you know, they'll, they'll take um, the best of what we have to offer if we willing to give them our best. So. Man, that's well. That's well said, man. Just like the world champ, we can't. I can't think of a better world champ, and that's perfectly well said, man. You are an ambassador, and you do do a lot for this community. And a lot of people look up to you, man. And you wear it well, and you carry it very well. So I really appreciate that, and I can't agree more with everything that you just that you stated about that, man. Thank you. You're world world champ, dude. Put on the crown, dude. You know, it, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> who, who, who would have guessed Magneto can can speak like this, dude? You know, just thought it'd be all the bums and scrubs that come out of here. He, he's always, uh, I mean, he, he tells you when you ain't nothing, too. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's but true. but that's just for those those who may not go back to the um the stream uh to watch the interview, uh anybody who watches my replays or watches um any coverage of uh the actual worlds, they'll see that I, I used a different dueling book name uh for this event. Um Abhave Kang Angs. Uh whether I pronounced that correctly, I'm not sure. Uh maybe uh JDZ will be able to put it on the screen when mm -hmm. the video comes up, but uh 
you know, that that DB name has a special story behind it. I shared it with JDZ and those who were still with us on, on that raw interview. So make sure, again, you go check it out. Uh, but JDZ and I, um, you know, I've gone to a couple GGPs and JDZ has been there. And, and one of the ones I did go to that he was gracious enough to invite me to stay with him. Uh, which saved us, um, you know, saved me some money and it made it much more uh, feasible for me to go was uh, GGP Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, JDZ and I drove, we had lunch together, we had dinner together, but uh, we stood together at the same hotel and we had conversations. We just talked about different stuff and and both of us are definitely uh, very passionate about uh, the GOAT community. Uh, I think the, the the where we came out of it was for anyone who watches X-Men and, and X-Men 97 was uh, very popular at the time, but uh, I, I sort of gave uh, sort of an analogy to JDZ and said, hey, JDZ, you, you know, you're like the Charles Eck of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GOAT community and, and you just want everybody, whether they're, they're casual plumbers and milkmen, to the tournament competitive folks to just get along and play. And I'm like, brotherhood's just stronger than the <laughs> casual players. Get them out of here. I don't want to see this, you know, uh, you know, Horace deck in my tournament. Get it out of here. And uh, I mean, we, we had we had a great time laughing about it, but uh, I, I think it sort of shows that at the end of the day, uh, we want what's best for the community. Um, right. Whether, you know, we have different approaches of where we want to get there, how we're going to get there. Uh, I wanted to get there uh, in my way. You want to get there, but I think there's a way to bridge all that. So absolutely. Uh, with that said, I chose have a client, uh, which means don't be afraid. And for anybody who watches, um, you know, X-Men, the 97 series on Disney plus, um, you know, one of the very emotional scenes is uh, when the Sentinels come and, they attack um, the X-Men and the Brotherhood and everybody, and, and Magneto goes to uh, defend um, some of the fellow mutants, and he tells them to don't be afraid. And, you know, my tribute to JDZ is, you know, I thought of him uh, months ago after that trip when I created this account, and I told myself, I will be using this account account for the world championship uh for many reasons but most importantly just out of a show of respect for what jdz uh has done for this community uh what he's done throughout the last three four years uh just bringing us up with his positive um you know image his his constant laughter his, his jokes uh, his entertaining streams i mean this guy has stories he should do his own podcast and he did be entertaining throughout but it was all uh, for you uh, when it comes to particularly that um, that name. And, and one of the reasons I asked you to get me that Zambira um, image with my head on it, because if you look at Zambira's cape, it has that purple red, which is sort of magnificent. Oh, dude, that's funny and as hell. <laughs> I, didn't put it, I, I put it together and it was like, man, this is just way too perfect. I need to get uh, that Photoshop that you used for my GFC uh, Europe win. Uh, and put that in there also. Uh, purple is my favorite color. It's, you know, obviously it matches very similar to Magneto's. Uh, this world had purple as a theme color. Yeah. You had your purple velvet. <laughs> it's velvet, right? It's, you know, what is this, velvet? Uh, again, purple is, you know, purple is my favorite color. You oh, guys look, know it's all about theme overdose. Look at that, it's dude. 2005. And uh, yeah, man, that, that, that to, to me was my tribute to you. And I'm very glad, uh, you know, the final interview of the season uh, for 2024 is me and you sitting here. And I think that's how it should always be. Dog, that is so, that is, man, again, again, it's super touching, man. I, I, I put on for this thing, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do any of the stuff that we do over here. I couldn't do it without you guys and what you do, man. You're providing hours of entertainment. The skill that you demonstrate on this field is all I could ever ask for, man. Because I don't think I could ever play on the level that you guys play on. And providing that constant entertainment, that constant skill, I think is like an art form. And to share that with the world, I think that is it's so super important to maintain the longevity of this game. And you, you have no idea how much it means to me to hear you say that and hear all the other pl other players say that throughout the stream. The whole staff, not just me, I know I'm the face, but there's a lot of people behind the scene that do a lot of great work. And it's all for passion. It's all for love. It's something that we all can agree that this thing is something that we truly, truly care about. And to keep it sustained and keep it maintained is very important to all of us. So I think that's really cool, man. And I really appreciate you saying that. And I love the tribute. And it, it it's gonna that's gonna be with me forever. I'll never be able to lose that. So I, I do appreciate it. And you know, this is this is coming your way. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> you got you got you got the championship belt coming your way. It'll be there. I'm going to the post office on Monday. It'll be out there, and you'll you'll have that coming to you soon. <laughs> It'll end up being on one of these top shelves. So when I, I, I do work interviews, <laughs> it'll be a, a point of conversation. Um, definitely. It'll probably replace these, uh, my deck boxes on this side, my Goat and Edison deck boxes, uh, just to have them up there. Um, so absolutely, man. Uh, I'll tell you, um, it's been a great year. Um, this is a great, again, bookend to a great season. Uh, not just for me, but I think for the uh, GOAT community. And, and just as you said, shout outs to all of the staff that mm. supports you and, uh, and uh, forgive me if I miss a name, but you know, Lucas G MMF, I, I see thrust pepper, uh, cub he, he's in there and, and just everybody who puts blood in everybody who puts on Fox. Yeah. Uh, huge shout out to Paul. He's a teammate of mine. And, and I know how much, how hard he works to not only be in the GF.com server, but you know, war chief in the war league. He also in uh, Euro? does the uh, goal Euro. So a uh, huge shout out to all you guys who volunteer your time uh, in an official capacity, uh, and um, as, as staff for Go Format, you know servers, I, I should say instead of just .com. But mm -hmm. shout out to all of you, uh, you know, continued um, success and continued. Um, hopefully, you guys continue to have the time to uh, dedicate and, and and apologies to any staff that you know ever gets uh, or feels like you know myself or anybody else sort of speaks out of line with you guys. Uh, sometimes again emotions tilt and all that other stuff plays uh into you know what comes out of our mouths and you know we don't mean any hard feelings and you know shout outs to you guys for putting up with it uh even though you shouldn't have to so thank you no nah, it's all good it's all good man it's all good we're gonna get there we're gonna get there champ i'm sure i'm sure but before we wrap this thing up man do you have any other special shout outs you want to give before we shut this thing down until 2025 uh maybe not special but i think they're necessary uh, again, um, shout outs to my, my family who, who sort of stood by me. They give me the uh, time and space uh, to play these events. Um, I, I don't miss any of my daughter's activities, but you know, I try to schedule um, as much Yu-Gi-Oh around making sure that I fulfill all my fatherly duties. So uh, shout outs to them for having the patience. I think number one, you should always take care of your family. So I'd make sure to do that. Uh, shout outs to God for you know giving me the air in my lungs and you know giving me the Trinity when I need it. So good, good on him. <laughs> Help me out. Uh, shout outs to uh, all of my teammates in the Team Overdose server. Uh, anybody, like I said, who's ever been a part of Overdose, Oversweep, Detox, Relapse, Rehab, Rico, all the different iterations for uh, you know the Overdose teams throughout the War League seasons. And, and shout outs to those who weren't necessarily here for the online community play. Uh, those who came before uh, the online community play where it was where it is, you know, the Shane Scurries, the Paul Levitins, the Bones, uh, my friend Sean Ruiz, shout outs to him, shout outs to just everybody who's been a part, Rymus Lizo, Brian Cornell, uh, Nate, everybody, Jaw, everybody who's just been part of uh, this 20 year journey, because, you know, that's where it all started 20 plus years ago uh, with some friends in New Jersey who who jokingly said, uh, Anthony, you're overreacting, and, and to, to quote Brian and Rymus in the car that day, you're ODing, you're, you, you know, you're doing too much. And I said, yeah, that's, that's going to be our team name, Overdose, ODing, why not? And uh, we started our team then, and we've uh, continued the legacy of uh, Overdose, and then that's through War League and just through our accomplishments throughout uh, the seasons. Uh, shout outs to um, Go Format War League server. For those who are interested in, um, you know, getting involved with the War League, you know, season six should be coming up sometime uh, late December, early January. Shout outs to all the different teams in the War League server, those in the Formula server. Uh, shout out to all you guys, those who I've met in GGPs. Shout outs to you guys. Um, I, I can't wait to meet more uh, players who are online who who travel to these GGPs. I'll, I'll make my efforts to go to a few more American ones next year. And again, uh, my goal is to go out to a few of them in Europe if I can. Uh, and a final shout out to uh, my best friend. Um, you guys knew it was coming. So if you're tired of hearing my, uh, my bromance <laughs> with uh, Kurt, uh, sorry, but uh, I, I got to shout him out. Uh, Christopher Perovic, he, he's been um, my day one. Uh, testing buddy um, he's been somebody who's always supported me pushed me he's uh, he's been my my equal competitor um, I've, if I had to say who was the greatest gold format player to ever play 
Uh, while many of you may, you know, bestow that on me, um, none of this is possible without Chris Perovic and all that I've learned from him over the years. And, and he's my goat um, for, for those who, who are wondering, you know, uh, he's number one in my book, number one in my heart, and uh, my bromance will never be over with Chris. <laughs> so shout out to him and everything that he's done to support me over the years. And uh, hopefully uh, when his daughter's old enough and, you know, go format strong and going and pushing, he, he comes back for one or two tournaments. But, you know, I won't hold my breath, but um, it'd, be, it'd be a great sight, a great scene uh, for him to come back and play. Uh, so shout outs to him and uh, again shout outs to everybody in the community love you guys all and i'm proud uh, to just be a, a part of this and be your world champion for 2024 shout outs hell yeah man hell yeah air horns up to the new goat format world champion man i love it i love to hear it. i love to see it man and thank you so much shout out to you for taking the time to come by and and give some of your knowledge up man we really do appreciate it uh hopefully we see you back on the dueling circuit maybe you can beat it back to back the first back to back go for my world champion who's going to come and take it from him that's up to you so make sure you guys get into the comment section get into these discords and get active in the community because it is wide open and available for you all to do that well champ that's all we got i think we did it that's all we got at this time, I'm your boy, JDZ. I play Ghost. Until the next time, shout out to all the real ones. Salute to the OGs. I got one right here. Peace.